son, and <coughs> I'm here with with Hodo Thompson, who I can't pronounce his name properly. Hodo this. And um, I thought it would be very nice if we could talk uh, talk about about your late father, who, who, who I, as I understand it, died shortly before you came here. So he, he died on uh, January the second. Yeah. He celebrated his 95th birthday on the January the first. And then he went to sea. So um, I'm I'm fascinated to know about about um, about him and how and your relationship with him. You had a very close relationship with your father. And yeah, both my parents actually mm. all, all all their lives. So my mother she died in 2001 in Copenhagen, and my father died like I said, January the second now. Yes, we were very close, good friends. I spent a lot of time with him during summers uh, when I was small, when I was little. And usually in, in Iceland, in those, those, in those years, people, uh, uh, kids were sent out to the countryside. And I remember two or three summers where I just spent with my father because uh, I don't know why, but I wasn't sent out to the country. My mother was somewhere else. And, but we had a lot of good time together. And we, and we always, we always had very, very good friends. We never ever quarreled. Not once. In your entire life? In our entire life. We almost did once. And it hit us both. And we decided to, you know, just separate and go eat. Just, uh, and talk later. So you're, you're the second oldest in your family, and you yes. have um, and you have two brothers and two sisters. I have two sisters and three brothers. Two brothers. Yes. And um, and your name, Hodor, yes, means hard one. Or hard one. Possibly. Yes. yes. Um, My father was reading the sagas when I was born, okay. and it's a saga about uh, a man called Hodor. So he thought it was a perfect name for his son. And I mean, as a child, you were you were very creative, and and um, I mean, yeah. you you you, learned, you taught yourself the guitar and started singing as an early age. Well, in my family, m both my parents, uh, my father played mandolin, my mother played guitar, and I grew up. We sang a lot, and they they read out us stories at night, and, and you know, uh, and my brother, especially one of my brother, he plays guitar. And we used to play a lot together. Um, so there was always a lot of music in my family. My father was a very good singer, beautiful tenor voice. And he kept singing until he, I, he sang on 1st of January on his own birthday. And he loved to sing one of my songs. It was his favorite. So he did that a lot. What, what song is that? It's called Leta e Blora Bloma. I looked for blue flowers, so it's a, it's a love song, mm. and that was his favorite song. So, so you you first performed when you were twelve. Mm, yes, and I mean publicly. Publicly, I had run my own theatre before that in can the you, basement. Can you tell me more about what your father taught you as a child? I mean, what was his what was his moral compass? Well, both my parents really, they, they brought us up like, don't judge other people and be who you are. Be honest and be who you are, first and foremost. And, um, yeah, that's maybe the, the, the real core of what they brought us up to. But is, that, is that commonplace in, in Iceland at the time? I mean, is that the way? I really don't know. It's quite a conservative society. You oh yes. But yes. you have you have cousins and, and other. Mm -hmm. Presumably, did they were they similar in the way they brought up their children? I really don't know. Mm. Honestly. So, <coughs> in terms of um, that that um, that desire to be or that that that, that encouragement to be yourself, um, when you then realised that that you were were gay. As a, as a young man, yes. how, how did how did you how was your relationship with your parents then? Well, we didn't talk much about it because to them it was 
they they knew, and it was nothing to talk about really. They already knew. They already knew, so mm. they were re very relaxed about it. They, they supported me whenever, and it must have been. I remember. Uh, I mean, I I'm the first one in my country to step out, to come out and, and say I am gay. And I had to leave the country, and I remember my mother especially, she, my father didn't talk much about things, you know, it took him time, he took him his time to talk about things. But I remember my mother talked about it, mm, she was a waitress, and she heard many, many very sad stories about me. She, they, they must have gone through a lot of difficult time, hearing all kinds of things about their son, and they knew that wasn't true, of course. Uh, I remember my mother said once that she was wait, uh, uh, she was working as a waitress, and she heard stories about me, and she said, look, he doesn't even live in Iceland, so this cannot, this is untrue. And, and uh, the people weren't, you know, they didn't care, they were just saying some bad things. Mm. So. I think they went through a, a rather difficult time in that period. But they didn't. They they were they were they they enjoyed that and they supported you through that. Oh, all the time, yeah. all the time. My father was very proud of me for what I did. So um, you you told me another story. So when you were eighteen, you you were working in a factory. Yes. And um, I mean that was an interesting story. Perhaps you could tell us that about about the strike. Ah yes. Uh, there was a, I was working in a, uh, a, a big factory in Iceland, in Reykjavik, and the foreman, there was an accident. There was a foreman we really respected and loved, all of us. We were like a group of 25, 30 guys working there. And there was an accident in the factory, and he died. And there was a new foreman uh, needed, of course. and. The uh, the director of the uh, the company he appointed his relative a person we really did not like at all he was kind of a bully and we protested and and the director he said well he's going to be your foreman and we said no we don't want him and we decided to go on strike. The, the the plan was on Monday morning we would not sh meet up. There was a car picking us up all around the Reykjavik and it was a little bit outside of Reykjavik. So okay, we agreed, uh, agreed not not to meet up on Monday. And I was the only one who didn't meet up. <laughs> I took it very seriously. I meant what I was doing. And they called me and and. They told me to come back to work, and I said, "No, I'm not, because I agree on this. This is this is something you shouldn't do. We should elect or get a foreman everybody likes, because then we will work better. We don't like this man. We never have, and we never will." Uh, a week later, I was fired <laughs> because I refu simply refused to to meet up. And uh, I remember going back and picking up my things, you know, trying to talk to my friends or, or, or the other guys there. And they were, I, I was really surprised, like, like how, I mean, why should you obey, like, in, in total blindness or, or uh, it's not humble, it's yeah. not being humble. They just accept it their condition instead of fighting it. Mm. I, I went away because I stood by my decision. Mm. I didn't like the man and that was it. And what did, what did your parents say? Well, I was 18 then mm. and uh, I wasn't living at home. Right. Uh, I don't remember talking to them about it. You mm. know. But then I went out to the countryside mm. to work. And um, <coughs> after that was that before you studied studied 
um, drama and so forth? Or? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, of course, just 18. And did you study, study drama after that? I started taking drama lessons in, in uh, when I was 20, 21 or something about that, yeah, about that time, because I was very shy. I'd always been very interested in theater. Mm. Um, and I wanted to like learn to speak clearly and, and stand up and be able to express myself. So that's why I went into a drama school, private, on Saturdays and Sundays. So, so in some respects then did politics come first? And then the what? Politics, I mean maybe music came first, singing, and then, and then, and then, I mean to some extent, I mean the, 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 the protest or the strike of the employers that would discourage a lot of people from, I mean, you lost your job and none of your friends stood, I mean, none of the people that you were with um, stayed with you. You, you, weren't, you weren't discouraged by that. No, 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 no. I'm not, never discouraged. You're never discouraged. <laughs> not really, no. Uh, it's my character. I, I mean, I have kind of a vision on things and, and meaning. And I think I can reason why I do things and why I have opinions about things. Like the guy, I, I read, he was a bully. Mm. And he would never have been a good foreman. Mm. And I would never have liked to work with him. And if I'm unhappy in my work, no, 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 no. That's not going to be any good. That's not going to be any good. And I think that's maybe something to do with my character. Well, not maybe it is. Mm. And the same goes for like. Was your father like that also? Yes, I think so. What did he do? Well, he he was a very shy man. Mm. He was a country boy. He, came, he was uh, his father was a farmer, and he was very shy. He didn't like you know attention at all but he had very strong opinions and he was on many strikes when he was younger and he had meanings of course like equality that was a very strong character a strike in him equality uh, did he have a religious background as well religious yeah, not at all not at all not at all he didn't believe in that but about maybe the sagas, and you were saying he was reading the sagas when you were born. Mm -hmm. uh, he was kind of a free thinker. Mm. He wanted people to be who they are, not what, not a production of, you know, mass production of some political ideas. Mm. Um, he was a communist for a while, but he like lost faith in that, and he was a, in, into social democratic thinking for a while, but somehow he got out of all this, because uh, he's like me, we, I don't know, I, but free thinking, mm. you're allowed to have your opinion as long as you don't hurt other people, and you should be respected as a person. So, so um, in your 20s you then had a bit of a revelation, and you decided that as part of your practice of art, you would adopt the idea that criticism is an act of love. Yes. That's an interesting idea, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where that, where that idea came from. Well, that came later, I think. I have a manifesto that I wrote. It's in my biography. It's a manifesto of like how I, I, I thought of an art, uh, how, what I thought artists should be. Mm. Like artists should, uh, why do we have artists? Uh, like, we, I had some debates in this, uh, this matter in, in the acting school, and when, I, when we were writing my biography, we found the books, a few books from my school, school books, and we found a manifesto, which is very typical for my way of thinking, and it was like an artist, we have artists because we the society needs them to criticize, especially misuse of power, and we should try to make life happier for people. 
we should be kind of a guardian a guardian angel is a, whatever we call it we should keep up constant dialogue with our society because we have the politicians and we know the nature of man they get into power and they want everyone to do exactly what they want to do and we sh artists should stand up and debate this so that's an that's an in interesting thing and because I learned very quickly in my in my uh, line of work as an artist we are kind of a mass productive uh, mass uh, production many artists are like they just go there for money like they produce something and, and they want more money and famous and all that and that's one side of art I, I, it's really not my type of art uh, I go more for like uh, I don't think about money that that's not my that doesn't drive me on um, I'm more thirsty for life I like life I like to see other people thrive in life enjoy life life is not a slavery shouldn't be slavery. Uh, so that's that's the that's the part of like a drive in, in, in me as a person to to criticize. I'm I'm gonna just stop and I'm gonna start again. Okay.